Hey there, you cool cats. Welcome back to part four. Today we are talking about why and how the modern brain is so lazy and how and what do I mean by getting fatigued so easily as well. Now, before we jump into that, just a reminder, my name is Dr. Dan. I'm a pharmacist turned weight management specialist and the little housekeeping thing that we do every single time, I need you to hit the subscribe button down below so that you don't miss another episode. This is part four of a six part series. So make sure you hit it, get the notifications on so that when the next one comes out, you are right on top of it. And of course, check me out on my other channels at The Official Dr. Dan. We are on TikTok, Instagram, you name it. That is where I post content every single day. So give me a follow there and come and check it out. And hey, leave me a question there or here and I will do my best to get to them. All right, up to this point, we have discussed the old man primal brain and what is going on in that respect of things. We have touched a little bit on the modern brain and how it's a teenager that's sitting shotgun to the old man primal brain. Today, we're going to dive a little bit deeper. And if you want to get a full primer on everything that we've discussed up to this point in time, I suggest going back and watching parts one to three. You can find them on my channel there, Dr. Dan Dash Weight Loss via Habit Mastery. So first things first, in terms of laziness, what I mean by that is that our modern brain is always looking for the path of least resistance. What is the least amount of work that can be done in order to get the desired outcome? And thinking of that teenager that's currently living on your couch, they're probably thinking something like, you know, how can I get my mom to bring me a snack from the kitchen instead of me having to get up and walk myself there to get it? Or is there a way that I can continue to lay on my parents' couch and actually make some money? Work smarter, not harder, you might say, but is that really the case that's going on here? So we'll set the scene. It's the end of the workday. You just got home and you've just realized that your spawn that has been laying on your couch all day long forgot to take the chicken out of the freezer for dinner. And the number of times that my brother and I did this to our poor mother, sorry mom. So now you've gotta make a new game plan. You've gotta figure out what are we gonna have for dinner at the same time considering how you might be able to murder your spawn as they are whining about how hungry they are at this point. And if you were anything like my mother, you have watched enough CSI episodes to know how to make someone drop off the planet like nothing happened. Anyways, you go and check the fridge. And any possible leftovers or viable options for dinner have obviously been consumed by the teenager. And of course, the empty dishes are not only next to the sink, they are not rinsed and they are one foot away from the dishwasher. Again, why, why do people have children? Okay. So we could go to the grocery store and maybe pick up some fresh meat or something like that. But F that, it's already 6.30 p.m. Who wants to go back out? Well, what about Instacart? They could bring the protein or the meat or whatever it is that you want directly to your door and you could then prepare dinner from that. And guess what? They could probably bring you those 100 garbage bags, a little bit of lye, and maybe some bleach too. But that's going to be like 30 to 60 minutes before it even arrives at your door. And then you got to prepare that meal and you also got a body to dispose of afterwards. Skip the dishes, on the other hand, can have a pizza at your door within 20 minutes. And oh hey, if you add a chocolate brownie to your order, you get the delivery fee waived. And at this point, you're probably thinking, fuck yeah, I deserve a brownie. And just like that, your brain decides to order that pizza and say, screw the rest of it. Now, the above probably took me about 60 seconds or so to get through, but in reality, that whole thought process happens with inside of your brain within seconds. Going to the grocery store would have been the most ideal option, but it also would have required the most amount of work. And you're hungry, so your primal brain is screaming at you for food, and your modern brain is stressed, tired, and cranky, and really doesn't want to put any work or effort into anything. So let's be real here. Pizza and a brownie sound way effing better than going back out to get some chicken. So your brain always wants the path of least resistance. I mean, look at all the various apps and other things that we've built into our society to make things as easy and as convenient as possible. Even selling a product or a video, if it's not like a one click button or something like that, if you've got to click two buttons, the chance of you coming and watching my YouTube videos suddenly drops way off. Now, the second thing that your modern brain does that could be classified as laziness is that it creates habits. And don't get me wrong, habits are absolutely vital to our survival and existence, but the wrong habits can definitely be detrimental. They are important because they allow us to solve a reoccurring problem in our life quickly and automatically. If you had to think about how to brush your teeth, wash your hair, wipe your ass every time you engaged in those behaviors, you would be exhausted before the day even started. 
You see, the creation of habits allows our brain to offload the remedial tasks that get repeated over and over again, and so that it can go on to solve the larger and more complex problems that you're going to encounter on your day-to-day -day basis. Such as, where can I find hydrofluoric acid in order to dissolve some mammalian tissues? And, as Breaking Bad showed us, you definitely do not want to put those mammalian tissues and the acid in a bathtub because bad things will happen. Now, as I said, one of the issues might be is that the habits that your brain creates might not be all that effective. And I never say there are good or bad habits. There are just effective and ineffective habits. And that's because every single habit that you create solves a problem. If every time that you are stressed out, you go for a run to feel better, that would be an effective habit. However, if every time you feel stressed out, you go and binge three chocolate bars, that might be a less effective habit. But in both situations, the habit that you have there is solving the problem, which is your stress, and making it feel better or go away. And obviously, in the case of running, it's probably going to have better effects or better long-term effects for you on your health, as long as you're not like literally running away from your problems. And one of the issues is, is that once your brain creates a habit or a new behavior, it becomes very challenging to break it or to create a new habit. It's not impossible, it's just hard AF. And that's because, well, your brain is a hedonist. So every time that your brain feels better after running or having some chocolate, essentially your brain is getting a reward. And this whole reward pathway is being driven by dopamine, which ultimately reinforces and gets you to repeat that behavior again in the future when you feel stressed out. So in typical hedonist fashion, every time you become stressed, your brain starts drooling like Pavlov's dog. And that's because your brain senses the stressor and it knows that you are going to give it a reward of going for a run or having some chocolate. So it's anticipating that hit of dopamine. Now, if you're like me and thinking in what effing universe is running a treat, let me just clarify that running for some sociopaths does produce dopamine and endorphins. But chocolate is going to produce a hell of a lot more feel-good hormones compared to running. In fact, this is one of the ways that we can distinguish an effective from an ineffective habit. You see, if a behavior or habit produces similar feelings to snorting a line of cocaine, having a great orgasm, and or just pure feelings of awesomeness right now, that is probably leading to an ineffective habit that is going to be bad for your health in the long term. Now, I say likely because how can great orgasms be bad for your health? And in the right situations, yeah, they definitely can be good for your health. But you know what? Come back to me in six months and tell me how your mental health is as you're trying to break up with that toxic partner. Effective habits, on the other hand, might produce feelings that are closer to, say, eating a decent steak or maybe having some well-made gluten-free bread. It's good, but not too good. And sometimes it's only okay depending on how much you enjoy dry, crumbly, dense pieces of bread. However, the additive effects of these minor feel-good, okay behaviors are ultimately going to compound over time if you repeat them again and again, and they're going to change your life in ways that lines of cocaine simply can't. And finally, what do I mean by the brain becoming fatigued quickly? Well, similar to the example I provided above there, you know how you feel exhausted and tired at the end of the day or after an emotionally stressful event? Your body isn't necessarily tired, nor did you really even do any kind of physical work or stimulation of any kind, but yet you feel exhausted. Yeah, what's happening there is that your brain's giving you the big old middle finger. You see, your brain, in particular your modern brain, has a finite amount of cognitive capacity or fuel each day. When you wake up, that cognitive capacity is at its highest level or the fuel tank is completely topped up. Then you go out, you make some breakfast, that uses a little bit of fuel. You then try organizing and dressing your mini spawns in order to get them ready to go out the door and that uses a little bit more fuel. Then you're trying to navigate traffic and yelling at the individuals that are driving along and don't understand that merging means matching the speed of the vehicles that on the road that you're merging onto, not blindly coasting along and assuming that people are going to accommodate you and your vehicle as you're going 40 kilometers per hour under the speed limit. This will probably use a significant amount of fuel. Even I probably used about an eighth of my tank of fuel on just managing my rage that I felt on writing that sentence. And that may or may not be an ineffective habit that I probably learned from my mother. Sorry again, mom. Anyways, at the end of the day, you have no fuel left. You have no more cognitive capacity to give. 
Why do you think it's so easy to stay on track and eat your diet and have your lunch during the day, but then at night it seems like everything falls off the rails? And that's because this fuel, this cognitive capacity, is necessary for self-regulation and self-control. When it's high, you have more control. And as it begins to decrease, it becomes increasingly more difficult to keep the old man primal brain subdued and to make the healthier choices that you want to make on your day-to-day -day basis. So doesn't that all sound fantastic? And your modern brain is probably saying, you know what, instead of fighting all of that, um, I'm just going to go over and see my ex and pick up a bag of cocaine on my way. Sound cool? Now, stay with me here. I know it sounds like a lot. And I won't lie, it's a lot of effing work in order to learn how to mitigate and manage the modern brain, the primal brain, and that sort of thing. But it is possible. And it is totally worth it. And that is exactly what we're going to start covering in part five. But for now, I'm going to leave you with a quote from a Jedi master. We are what they grow beyond. That is the burden of all masters. So that is it for today, everybody. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below so that you don't miss out when part five comes out and I describe how, some of the strategies, tips, and tricks and how you can start mitigating your modern and primal brain. As well, don't forget to check out my other channels at The Official Dr. Dan. We are on TikTok, Instagram, you name it, we're there and I post content there every single day. As well, check out our website and get on our mailing list so that you can get the most up-to-date happenings that are happening with me and my company. And if you need additional support, book a free consult with me at healthcareevolve.ca. Have a great day, everybody, and time until next, see we.